Welcome friends to the basic concepts of tax part 2 I am CA Gautam Aghi your mentor for this session Let's come to question number 2 a domestic company means only an Indian company only a foreign company which has made the prescribed arrangements for declaration and payment of dividend in India or an Indian company and a foreign company which has made the prescribed arrangement for declaration and payment of dividend in India so the answer is C, an Indian company or a foreign company. The answer is C, the Indian company or a foreign company which has made the prescribed arrangements for declaration of payment of dividend in India. Let's start and convey you the procedure for computation of total income first is first step is determination of residential status of a person or an SSE here so residential status he could be either a resident or a non resident under resident he could be a resident an ordinary resident resident but not an ordinary resident second would be classification of income under different heads so the heads of income are salary income from house property profit and gains of business or profession capital gain income from other sources step 3 exclusion of income not chargeable to tax for an example agriculture income which is not chargeable and totally exempt there are partial incomes as well which are partially exempt from income tax e.g house rent allowance education allowance then we'll come to step four computation of income under each head the heads that we have conveyed before income from house property salary profit and gains so we compute the actual incomes that are there in that head fifth point would be clubbing of income of spouse minor child etc so there are cases wherein people try to avoid tax by giving the income to their spouses and minor child so in this case the AO has the power to check whether this has been done or not and then deduct or add it across for the SSE step six set off or carry forward of losses so in this case there can be uh, examples wherein we can add or delete the losses on profit from different heads as per the regulations given by the income tax step seven would be computation of total income so once all the uh, incomes is derived from each head we add it up to get a total income gross total income step 8 would be deduction of total income deduction from total income so there are several deductions deductions could be in respect of certain payments e.g. LIC medical insurance etc there could also be in certain incomes like royalty income etc there could be other deductions as well like deduction in case of person with disability step 9 to reach to total income the income arrived after claiming all the above deductions from gross total income is known as total income it should be rounded up to near nearest multiple of 10 so just to give you a small brief graph 
or, or so to speak flow chart would be computation of total income would be first residential status then income under the separate the number of heads which are there so classification under the heads like salary house property profit and gains of business or profession capital gains other sources then reaching to aggregation of income then clubbing and set off of carry forward clubbing of minor spouses set off or carry forward of losses to arrive at gross total income then deductions reaching to total income step 10 would be applications of the rates which are applicable for that ssc so it is different for different ssc then that application is done step 11 is applying the surcharge or the rebate which we will cover in the next in the coming slides then 12th would be education says application of education says just 2% and secondary and higher education says which is 1% then the last step would be deducting the advance tax or tax deducted at source so let's jump to question number 3 suppose mr x is a shareholder in a company a as well as in a company b he has 10% shareholding in company a and 20% shareholding in company b the accumulated profits of company a is 10 lakhs a loan of 12 lakhs is given by company a to company b how would the same be treated in the hands of company b so the answer would be the loan up to the extent of accumulated profit of 10 lakhs would be treated as a dividend and would be taxable in the hand of company b so let's jump to question number 4 the rates of income tax are mentioned in income tax act 1961 or the annual finance act or both in the income tax act and the annual finance act the answer is c both in the income tax act 1961 and for annual finance act so let's let's look at the rates which are applicable under assessment year 1516 for all individual huf association of person body of individuals artificial judicial person so income less than 2 2.5 lakhs the rate would be nil in case the exam, uh, income exceeds 2.5 lakhs but does not exceed 5 lakhs 10% of the total income where the income exceeds 5 lakhs but does not exceed 10 lakhs 25000 plus 20% over and above the income of 5 lakhs where the total income exceeds 10 lakhs 1 lakh 25000 plus 30% of the income exceeding 10 lakhs So let's look at the question number five. Mr. X has a total income of twelve lakhs. Compute his gross tax liability. So I'll solve it here only. So as for the slab, we have in case a ten lakhs of income is there or above, you will take one lakh twenty-five thousand. As tax plus thirty percent of income which exceeds ten lakhs. Two lakhs, which comes out to one lakh twenty-five thousand plus sixty-five thousand. Apologies, sixty thousand. So it's one lakh eighty-five thousand. So 
So let's go to question number six. In respect of resident assessee who is of the age of 60 years or more but less than 80 years at any time during the previous year, 2014-15, the basic exemption is of 2.5 lakhs or basic exemption of 3 lakhs or basic exemption of 5 lakhs is available. So as he's not, uh, he would not be going to this slab, we'll be referring to this slab. So hence, the answer would be B, 3 lakhs. To take you through that slab, which is there separately for a resident individual of age of 60 years, but less than 80 years in the previous year, the total income, which does not exceed INR 3 lakhs, would be nil. Where the income exceeds 3 lakhs, but less than 5 lakhs, 10% of the of the income exceeding 3 lakhs. In case the income exceeds 5 lakhs, but less than 10 lakhs, 20,000 plus 20% of the amount of which total income exceeds 5 lakhs. Where the total income exceeds 10 lakhs, 1 lakh 20,000 plus 30% of the amount which exceeds 10 lakhs. For the senior citizen, which is who is over 80 years, slab is as below. In this case, there is no 10%. So, 5 lakhs, nil. Less than 10 lakhs, but over 5 lakhs, 20% of the amount exceeding 5 lakhs. And where the total income exceeds 10 lakhs, then 1 lakh plus 30% for the amount which exceeds 10 lakhs. For the firm and LLP, Limited Liability Partnership, the tax would be 30%. Local authorities also, it will be 30%. Flat. Cooperative societies would be this slab. 10,000, less than 10,000, 10%. Between 10,000 to 20,000, 1,000 plus 20% of the amount exceeding 10,000. And in case it exceeds 20,000, then 3,000 plus 30% of the amount exceeding 20,000. For the company, domestic company, it's 30%. For the company other than domestic company, it's 40%. And in certain cases, as given here, the tax rate is 50%. So the rate of tax, question number six, for the rate of tax applicable for domestic company for assessment year 1516 is 30%. 35% or 40%. We just did that and the answer is A. 30%. Just to give you a little bit of background here, about other than the other rates given above, the rates prescribed for cap long term capital gain is 20%. For Short term capital gain on transfer of equity share, equity oriented fund, business trust, it's 15%. The conditions for availing the benefit of this consensual rate are the transaction of sale of such equity shares or units should be entered into on or before 1 10 2004. Such transaction should be chargeable to STT, security, securities transaction tax. And it's 30% flat for winnings from any lottery, crossword puzzle, horse race, card games, or other any games, gambling or betting of any other form. Question number seven. The surcharge applicable in case of an individual is 10% of the tax applicable or 10% of tax applicable if tax income exceeds 10 lakhs. 10% of the tax applicable if total income exceeds 1 crore. The answer is C. 10% of the tax applicable if total income exceeds 1 crore. So just to give you a background on this question, surcharge, the rate of surcharge applicable for assessment year 15-16 are as follows. For the individual HUF, AOP, BOI, 
artificial judicial person cooperative society local authorities firms llps if the total income exceeds 1 crore surcharge payable would be 10% of the total income total income tax there is a marginal relief as well in certain cases wherein if the income exceeds 1 crore that amount which is over 1 crore the surcharge should not be over and above that for the domestic company the search uh, the surcharges if in case total income is more than 1 crore but less than 10 crores 5% if more than 10 crores it's 10% marginal relief is exactly the same that in case if the income exceeds 1 crore the surcharge which is payable should not be over and above the income which is more than 1 crores same goes for this as well let's do a question to give you more clarity here surcharge applicable for a domestic company for assessment year 15 16 is 10% if the income exceeds 1 crore 5% if the total income exceeds 10 crore 5% if the total income exceeds 1 crore but does not exceed 10 crore and 10% in case if the total income exceeds 10 crores so the answer is c 5% if the total income exceeds 1 crore but less than 10 crores and 10% in case if it exceeds 10 crores let's do question number 9 compute the tax liability of an x limited a domestic company assuming that the total income of x is x limited is 1 crore 1 lakh and the total income does not include any income in the nature of capital gain so in this case let's compute so as we said for 1 crores it's flat 30% which would be 30 lakhs however as the income exceeds 1 crore by 1 lakh so hence there will be a surcharge which will be payable at 5% so 1 crore 1 lakh the rate of interest rate of tax would be 31.5% which is actually including that surcharge of 5% so it comes out to 31 lakhs 81500 however there is a marginal relief here as income only exceeds 1 lakhs over over 1 crore the tax payable cannot be more than 1 lakh here hence the marginal relief would be 31 lakhs 85000 minus 31 lakhs so the marginal relief is 81500 and the person has to pay 31 lakhs question number 10 compute the tax liability of x limited a domestic company assuming that the total income of x limited is 10 lakhs 10 crores 1 lakh and the total income does not include any income in the nature of capital gain so the answer here is the total income is 10 crores 1 lakh now The rate of tax here would be 33% as the surcharge tax rate is 30% surcharge is 10% so which comes out to 33% so in this case the total tax comes out to So 
So the tax is 3 crores 30 lakhs 33,000. However, tax cannot exceed 3 crores 15 lakhs. 31.5% of 10 crores. Hence, the marginal relief would be this minus this, which in this case would be 14 lakhs 33,000. For foreign companies, the surcharge it's exactly the same as domestic company, but the percentage changes. Whether it's 5% for the domestic company, it's 2% for the foreign company, and where it's 10% for the domestic company, it's 5% for the foreign company. Same goes for the marginal relief as well. The logic remains the same. The surcharge applicable to a foreign company for assessment year 1516 is 5% if the total income exceeds 1 crore, or 2% if the total income exceeds 1 crore but does not exceed 10 crore and 5% if the total income exceeds 10 crore or 2% if the total income exceeds 10 crore. So the answer is B. 2% if the total income exceeds 1 crore but does not exceed 10 crore, 5% if the total income exceeds 10 crore. Education says in secondary and higher education says is 2% 1% respectively for all SSEs. It is there basically to fulfill the commitment of the government to provide and finance education higher and secondary. Question number 12. Education says at 12, 2% and secondary and higher education says at 1% is payable on income tax only, income tax plus surcharge if applicable minus rebate under section 87a if applicable or only on surcharge so the answer is b income tax plus surcharge income tax plus surcharge or less rebate at the rate of 2% plus 1%, 3%. Let's do question number 13. A is running a business from 1993 onwards. Determine the previous year for the assessment year 1516. So in this case, the previous year would be 2014-15 which is it will start from 1st April 14 and will last till 31st March 15. A chartered accountant sets up a profession on 1st July 2014 determine the previous year for assessment year 15-16. So 1st July he started his business so 1st July 2014 till 31st March 15 would be, would be the previous year. Now question number 14. Where the total income of an artificial judicial person is INR 3 lakhs 10,000, the income tax payable is INR dash and the surcharge payable is INR dash. The options are 6000 INR surcharge name, 11000 surcharge 1100, 93000 surcharge 4650. So he is an artificial judicial person. So it will be for if you remember 2.5 lakhs it was nil, 5 lakhs it was 10%. So in this case, 3.1 lakhs minus 2.5 lakhs is 60,000 at the rate of 10%, which is 6,000 in this case. And surcharge is payable only if the income exceeds 1 crore. So the correct answer would be 
a six thousand surcharge nil. Question number fifteenth. So question number fifteen. State instances when income of previous year will be assessed in the same previous year only. So the answer is shipping business of non-resident under section seventy-two, where a ship belonging to or chartered by a non-resident carries passengers, livestock, mail, or goods shipped at a port in India. The ship is allowed to leave the port only when the tax has been paid. or satisfactory arrangement has been made for payment thereof 7.5% of the freight paid or payable to the owner or the charter or to any person on his behalf whether in india or outside india on account of such carriage is deemed to be the income which is charged to tax in the same year in which it is earned hence it is charged in the same previous year and no need to go to the assessment year The second here is person which is leaving India under Section seventy four one seventy four, where it appears to the assessing officer that any individual may leave India during the current assessment year or shortly after its expiry, and he has no present intention of returning to India. The total income of such individual for the period from the expiry of the respective previous year. Upon to the probable date of his departure, departure from India is chargeable to tax in that assessment year itself. So, in case if he is leaving in fourteen, the previous year is fourteen fifteen. The assessment year also would be fourteen fifteen if A O wants so. The third option is what association of person B O I or artificial judicial person formed for a particular event. For a purpose under Section 174A, so if AOA, AOP, BOI, etc. is formed or established for a particular event or a purpose, and that ceases to exist, and the AO apprehends that the AO BO is likely to be dissolved in that same year, as the purpose is reached or the event has been done, he can make an assessment of the income. Up to the date of dissolution, as the income of relevant assessment year. The fourth would be person likely to transfer property to avoid tax under Section 175 during the current assessment year. If it appears to the AO that a person is likely to charge, sell, transfer, dispose, or otherwise part of any of the or any of his assets to avoid payment of tax liability. under this act the total income of such person for the period from the expiry of the previous year to the to the date till date when the assessing officer commences proceeding under this section is chargeable to tax in that assessment year itself and the last is discontinued business under section 76 where any business or profession is discontinued in an assessment in any assessment year the income of the period from the expiry of the previous year up to the date of such discontinuance may at the discretion of the ao be charged to tax in that assessment year itself that concludes the presentation thank you very much